Good morning, everyone. Uh, just like to, we're going to get started shortly. Just asking everyone if they could come forward and uh, take their designated seats. Good morning, everyone. Uh, just asking anybody that's uh, still standing to, uh, to find their way to their designated seat. We want to get started. Uh, we have a pretty tight uh, agenda to get through our forestry summit this morning.
Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome, uh, panel, and uh, welcome to our Indigenous governments that are here today, our organizations, industry, forestry stakeholders, academia, students, and other distinguished guests. I'm delighted to welcome you all here to our Forestry Sector Summit. Uh, I'm Christopher Mitchellmore, the Minister of Tourism, Culture, Industry, and Innovation with the Government of Newfoundland and Labrador, and a member of the Cabinet Committee on Jobs. And I'm joined here today with the Honorable Premier Dwight Ball of Newfoundland and Labrador, Mr. Bill Dawson, the Executive Director of the Newfoundland and Labrador Forest Industry Association, the Honorable Jerry Byrne, who's Minister of Forestry and Land Resources, the Mr. Darren Pelly, the General Manager of Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper Limited, Mr. John Davis, General Manager of the Halipu Development Corporation, Ms. Anne Lebronroof, the Atlantic Provincial Leader with FP Innovations, the Honorable Bernard Davis, Minister of Advanced Education Skills and Labor, Mr. Robin Philpot, Representatives of Cottles Island Logging and Lumber, and Mr. Tyler Osman, Representative of Burton's Cove Logging and Lumber, and I'd like to also acknowledge uh, my uh, colleagues in the House of Assembly that are here today. Uh, Minister uh, Graham Leto is here, Municipal Affairs uh, and Environment. Uh, Parliamentary Secretary to Minister Byrne, Fisheries and Land Resources, Scott Reed. And MHA's Jerry Dean, Derek Bennett, and uh, Brian Moore. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping for everybody here uh, today. That washrooms are located to my left around the elevator, then turn left down the hallway by the Navigate Entrepreneurship Office. There is also a fire exit located at the main entrance to my left and directly across from the stage area. We have several members of the media present here today and note that this event will be live streamed. Uh, we ask that you please take a moment to set your cell phones and pagers, if, if people still have uh, pagers, there may be some first responders here, uh, to put them to vibrate. And uh, should you have to take a cell uh, a call, uh, please quietly move to an area away from the speakers. Immediately following the formal speaking portion of the agenda, we will be hosting a networking buffet luncheon in the airport lounge, which can be accessed by turning left just before the building's main entrance. During the luncheon, there will be an industry showcase featuring displays from a number of industry and forestry stakeholders. I encourage you all to take some time to speak to the forest industry and stakeholder representatives participating in these displays. Uh, I'd first like to start uh, by acknowledging that the land on which we gather is in traditional Mi'kmaq territory and we acknowledge with respect the diverse histories and cultures of the Beothic, Mi'kmaq, Innu, and Inuit of this province. In terms of our agenda, we will begin the day with a traditional blessing, followed by a safety moment, and a welcome from Grenfell campus of Memorial University. Throughout the morning, we will hear from Honorable Premier Ball and Mr. Bill Dawson. Minister Byrne will provide us with an overview of the forest sector work plan, followed by remarks by Minister Davis and representatives of our industry and Indigenous partners. I would now like to call upon Chief Brendan Mitchell of the Halapu First Nations to come to the podium and provide a blessing. Chief Mitchell. Well, good morning, everyone. Before I do that, though, I just want to welcome you all to beautiful Cornerbrook and again to the traditional territory of Mi'kmaq people. It's not often we get so many people from government, industry, interest groups, students, educators all together in one room to talk about an important initiative with respect to forestry. It is about moving forward, isn't it? I had the luxury of working in the forest industry for about 30 years initially with Bowater, Newfoundland, and later for 28 and a half years with Corner of Pulp and Paper. I think back to a time in the mid-1990s when we had thousands of people working in our industry and we had a combined payroll between Cornerbrook, Stephenville, and Grand Falls of over $133 million annually. 
our industry became a major economic stabilizer for the province, but particularly in this area, as the mill in Cornwall was, was built in 1923, and we made our first roll of paper in July of 1925, July 8th. So we've come a long way and we're still here. Back in those days, we had eight machines running in this province and now we have two left. So we're here. So I'm really excited about prospects of diversity moving forward together in this industry. And again, I'm so pleased that so many people, and listen, any day we have Premier Ball in Corner Brook is a great day. And we have other ministers here in MHAs and a lot of people who are friends of, of this region and certainly friends of Grenfell Campus. I started here myself in 1975 in the very first class, so I was grateful that Grenfell came here. We have a wonderful relationship with Grenfell Campus at Halibut First Nation because of all of that. So what I'd like to do now is open our morning with, with an opening prayer, so I'll ask you all to stand, please. Thank you. <clears throat> Creator, we give thanks this morning for this day and all the good that we have in our lives in our families, in our communities. We ask for help for those among us who have problems of a personal, professional, or community nature. Creator, we ask our guidance as leaders, as industry members, as educators, and others in the role we all play on behalf of our people, our communities, on behalf of all Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. Guide all of us in the important roles that we play Encourage us to work together collaboratively and effectively because together we can build a better future for our province and all of our people and communities. I'm Sinogama. All my relations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Mitchell. I would now like to ask Mr. Dion Newman, Executive Director of the Forestry Safety Association, Newfoundland and Labrador, to come to the podium to lead us in a safety moment. Good morning, everyone. It's great to see so many people here uh, interested in forestry and uh, promoting our sector. Uh, the topic I chose today is winter driving. Um, you can look out through the window this morning and of course we can see the snow is falling. Uh, it seemed like we were getting a little taste of spring, but don't worry, we're in western Newfoundland, so there's lots of snow left yet to come. Uh, just some tips. Um, I found this on the AAA website. Avoid driving while fatigued. Of course, getting the proper amount of rest before you go on any driving adventure, whether it's across the province or in on our forestry access roads, of course, is very, very important. Never warm up vehicles in enclosed areas such as garages. Make certain tires are properly inflated, because again, this does help with fuel mileage and also with steering your vehicle. Uh, never mix different types of tires, such as ice radials, summer tires, all season tires. Make sure they're all the same size, same brand. Always make sure your gas tank is at least half full to avoid gas line freeze ups. And again, always carry some gas line antifreeze. Uh, if possible, avoid using your parking brake in cold, rainy weather. Again, uh, the brakes can freeze and of course then you will not be able to move your vehicle. Do not use cruise, cruise control while driving on slippery surfaces. Even when it is raining, wet surfaces, of course, cruise control can cause some serious issues. Always look and steer where you want to go. Uh, if we look at an obstacle, and instead of where we want to go, of course, we will tend to steer into the obstacle. Always use your seat belt every time you get into your vehicle, and whether it's even just going across the parking lot, it's very, very important that we wear our seat belts. When we're driving, of course, preparing for long trips across the province, I'm sure a lot of you have drove a fair distance today just to get here. Make sure that your vehicle's in tip-top condition. Make sure your fluids and everything are at the appropriate levels, coolants, and our windshield wash. Uh, this time of year, of course, we need to carry lots of windshield wash. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have a safety kit in your vehicle. So some, a snow shovel, something for traction, whether it be some salt or sand. Of course, extra clothing, something to keep warm. Uh, we're also encouraged that if we do happen to get stuck or go off the road, to stay in our vehicle, never wander off from the vehicle because there have been instances where 
course, people have been in serious trouble from leaving their vehicles. So stay with your vehicle. Only turn your vehicle on to take the cold chill out. And again, that way you can cons conserve your gas. That way, if you're stuck for a long period of time, of course, you can keep heat. One very important thing to note, of course, is distracted driving. It's a major, major issue. Uh, we hear about it more and more in the news, and if you take a drive just across town now, I'm sure you will see somebody eating, somebody talking on a cell phone, and again, this is a major, major cause of uh, accidents on our roadways and also on our forest access roads. Also, please never drive under the influence. Uh, that's not just alcohol or illicit drugs. That can also be from prescription medications as well. So if you're on any medications, make sure it doesn't inhibit your uh, ability to drive. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Newman, and certainly some great advice for all of us. As somebody who drives quite a bit, uh, I certainly uh, can attest. I put my car in the garage this morning to make sure she's in tip-top shape, so uh, a little support for the city of Cornerbrook there, Mayor Parsons. Um, but without our next uh, speaker uh, and all the work that was put forward, uh, today's event would not be possible. And uh, we're very fortunate to have such a great uh, institution here in terms of uh, post-secondary. So I'd like to ask Dr. Jeff Keshen, the Vice President of Memorial University Grenfell Campus, to come forward to bring remarks on behalf of the Grenfell Campus. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grenfell. Our president, Dr. Kerry Kachanowski, sends his greetings. Uh, he wanted to be here today, um, but he is committed to meetings at Treasury Board. Premier Ball, Minister Byrne, Minister Mitchell Moore, Minister Davis, it's truly a pleasure and an honor to host you, other members of government, those with the Newfoundland and Labrador Forestry Industry Association, FP Innovations, industry leaders, experts, and other key stakeholders, all of whom have contributed to the creation of the very impressive forestry sector work plan that promises to link this link the, and to harness the skills, the capacity, the interests, the perspectives of government, industry, academe, indigenous governments and associations, other relevant parties to enhance the health and diversification of this critically important sector. Grenfell Campus is highly committed to advancing this plan and the government's very comprehensive and visionary way forward strategy in which we are named as a contributor in several key areas. We sincerely appreciate the government's generous support to advance our research capacity in areas fundamentally important to the future vitality of Newfoundland and Labrador, which involves not only cutting edge work led by our professors, but also by the extremely talented students who represent the future of this wonderful province and region. At Grenfell, we've made and are committed to continue making contributions to the efficiency, diversification, profitability, and future prospects of forestry in areas that include resource management, land use, climate change, the potential of biofuels, pest mitigation, strengthening entrepreneurship, and raising public awareness of sectoral challenges and opportunities. Mr. Premier, we are also embracing your government's encouragement of partnerships between academe and industry and collaboration between our two post-secondary institutions, such as through groundbreaking work with Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper, where, for instance, we are endeavoring to transform wood waste into soil nutrients, mix the seam into a heating source, and to enhance employee training. On behalf of Grenfell Campus, allow me to once again extend to you, Mr. Premier, our sincere appreciation for holding these important meetings here and our hope that you and others present today will visit often to see firsthand the amazing work done by Grenfell's incredibly talented students, professors, and staff. I know that you have a busy day of deliberations ahead. I wish you much success in these talks, but before you begin, and before I take my leave, I'd like to present all our esteemed guests here with a memento of your visit to Grenfell. First, for all our panelists at the corner there, is a monogram took prepared at our new makerspace and innovation and fabrication center made possible 
by generous provincial and federal government support. And I have a little bit something extra for our Premier and the Minister responsible for Forestry, who just happens to be our MHA. You have to wait for both of them, so I have to ask them individually. Mr. Premier, we know that you are a big hockey fan, so you know. There you go. So, first of all, I'm going to pull two bags out. I'm going to present to you a personalized Grenfell Warriors jersey. Number 11 was worn or selected for Harbour Grace's Danny Cleary, who, as you know, as a member of the Detroit Red Wings, was the first Newfoundlander to have his name etched on Lord Stanley's Cup. And Minister Byrne, you once starred with the Grenfell Warriors basketball team, but we thought that you, <laughs> you, you, hey, go with it, man. <laughs> we thought that you would embrace the spirit of winter, so your personalized hockey jersey is number 73, that worn by Bonavistas. Michael Ryder, who is a member of the Boston Bruins, who I taught back at Ottawa U, was the second Newfoundlander to have his name etched on the cup. Thank you all very much. Come on forward, guys. Take a picture with them. That is yours. And this is yours. Oh, and it's got your name, and there you go. Turn it around. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Dr. Keshin, and uh, we certainly have a couple of warriors now on our team that's uh, leading that way. Um, it's a real pleasure to hear your remarks and the importance of academia to driving industry uh, in, in, in this province, in particular to the forest industry. Uh, Premier Ball uh, recently gathered the, uh, his youth council and we have here today uh, Mr. Mark Murdoch uh, who's part of that council and we're so pleased to have him and uh, the youth voice uh, connected to government so that we can drive policy decision to make sure that we're building things for the future of our province. So I'd like to ask Mr. Mark Murdoch uh, to come forward uh, to introduce our Premier. I don't know if I can follow that up, Dr. Cashin. I got no presents for you at all. I got no presents. I got no jerseys. <laughs> um, it's really a real pleasure, <clears throat> excuse me, to be here today. I am a Grenfell alumni member. Just graduated uh, last year, so it's awesome to see some familiar faces, and you know, be back with Dr. Cashin again here today. Um, I would now like to introduce our speaker for today's event. Uh, on November 30th, 2015, as you guys know, uh, Dwight Ball led his party to victory in the general election and became the 13th premier of our province. Before that, he was actually the MHA of my district in Deer Lake, so we had a, a pre-existing relationship. In response to the unprecedented fiscal and social challenges that his government faced upon coming to power, Premier Ball launched the way forward in 2016, a comprehensive plan involving all government departments to address all social and economic challenges we face here at home. The way forward had four objectives. It was to strengthen the provincial economy, to improve efficiency in spending and government resources, deliver better services, and achieve better outcomes for the people of our province, just like me and you. As a part of the way forward, plans have already been launched in the agriculture, aquaculture, technology, oil and gas, and mining sectors. And these plans have attracted more than $16 billion in global investment and are creating employment and new opportunities here at home. Today, Premier Ball will join provincial industry players in launching a plan for the forestry sector, a plan that will promote sustainable growth and diversification, job creation, and a brighter futures for families and communities, especially young families. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Premier Wall. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Mark, and to Chris, and to Jeff, and Jeff, I had to tell you, uh, Thank you very much for the gifts. Number 11 in my world, of course, even though I like Danny Cleary, would be Saku Kaibu or Brendan Gallagher, let's be very clear. I know Don Bradshaw is back there. Uh, it was a, a habit fan as well. But uh, Mark mentioned bringing gifts, and I'm so pleased to see members of our youth council here that will be participating too as we get through uh, today's uh, work. But Mark, if you were to bring gifts, I quickly thought about your last two jobs. 
One gift would have been to, to Jeff, would have been probably some insect from the Insectarium. But he's currently employed with a cannabis company in Cornerbrook, so <laughs> the second option might be more appealing. I'm not sure, but uh, we will leave that for later. But nevertheless, it's uh, certainly a pleasure for me to be here this morning in, in Cornerbrook and joined on the stage by many people that I, would I have known for sort of quite some time. But it's always a pleasure, especially when I get back to talk a bit about, about the forestry sector and how important it is to people in our province. Uh, people you've met already, Jerry, of course, who was the minister responsible, didn't realize he was a basketball star. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not so sure where the team finished that year, but nevertheless, I could guess. Um, but Bill Dawson, of course, who have done a tremendous amount of work over many months now leading into uh, why we're here today. And Darren Pelly, uh, native Deer Laker, uh, obviously. We've got to promote our hometowns as we usually do, but Darren's great to see you, you here with uh, Cornwick Pulp and Paper. John Davis with the, with the Alapu, and Brendan, thank you uh, very much for your reflections as well, but always nice to see you too, John. To Anne uh, from New Brunswick, I guess it is, that you're in with us today and joining us and sharing your insights. Robin Philpott right behind me here, some of the upping, when you want to talk about stars, not basketball, but in the forestry industry, we have Robin and Tyler back with us. And I know Tyler is over a little bit to the right there. He's a bit of a music, musician, too, as well. I was thinking about calling him on the weekend and get him to bring this according that he likes to play in Hampton from time to time. But you, know, you see where the future, where I'm going with this, is when you look at people on our stage here. Uh, Christopher Mitchamore, who's got as many miles on him, as kilometers on him, as most saw logs in this province, uh, as he's back and forth the Northern Peninsula and other members of the House of Assembly. I know Jerry and Brian, I see Scott Reed here, probably missed one or two, but I know there's many of my colleagues here. Uh, Bren Wood, representing New Onotua, but, uh, were you too, Bren? Uh, yes, there you go. Uh, New Onotua, but as in joining us today as well. Gre and Greg Jador is here from the Miyakapuk. Uh, and of course, when you look at where your community in Con River, the issues that you've had to deal with in recent weeks, certainly I've had many chats with Chief Joe, and our, uh, we're still thinking about the families. Chief Mitchell, always a pleasure, and you gave me an opportunity as you kind of reflected back to the 70s. I often thought about growing up in the forestry industry, and I had some great chats with some of our, uh, some people who've been around the forestry industry over the weekend. Uh, I think of my own grandfather, I gotta say, I was sharing some stories this morning uh, with, with Bill and others, and my grandfather was a contractor and many, many years ago. So if you were anywhere in, in the White River area or in the, in the uh, White Bay area, you know, typically one of my either grandfathers or uncles had a place to play in harvesting forestry. So I can never remember a time in my life when the forestry industry really wasn't part of it. My father went on to be a, an activist, a union activist at the time, and organized many loggers, who at the time it was necessary, and, and I know the passion that he had for that, and eventually wound up again back with, with, Cornbrook, with Kruger and Cornbrook Pulp and Paper to actually uh, uh, to develop the forestry industry. So it's been the passion for me and my family for, for many, many years. So I understand you know, the, the, uh, the challenges that this industry has been through, but I also know and take great pride in knowing that there are many opportunities within this industry. And the work that's gone, gone into preparing for today's meeting right here at Grenville Campus. And really pleased that they picked this location because many people that I've spoke with already this morning said, you know, this is some of the first time, or for, for some of you, the first time being here. This is really one of the uh, educational institutions that we are extremely proud of to actually build industries like the forestry industry around in Newfoundland and Labrador. So you might ask, as you're sitting here, is why is it that we do this? And Mark mentioned in his introduction back uh, about the way forward back in 2016 when we put in place a plan for growth and sustainability for Newfoundland and Labrador. The objective was this, was to meet with industry leaders, meet with our community partners, to actually work together to put together successful plans that will create the employment opportunities for Newfoundland and Labrador, but more importantly, to stabilize those traditional industries that we have within our province and build on those assets no matter where they were. We've done that within the oil and gas industry with a lot of success. We've opened up for the first time in the history of this province deep water exploration that will lead to a development opportunity for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. We've done it with the mining 
industry, where we see new mines opening up within Newfoundland and Labrador. Lab West right now, I've been going back and forth to that area, to that area for years. Right now, I'll tell you, they are on the cusp of a breakthrough in the mining industry with the core resources opening up, TATA making significant investments in Shepherdville, working with the Quebec government, yes, working with the Quebec government because there's synergies and opportunities when we actually work together with people. Uh, the aquaculture industry, unprecedented what's happening on, on the Buren Peninsula, in the Costa Bays area, and also now in Stephenville where we're seeing marine arborists making significant investments. We've seen it within the technology sector, with the agriculture sector, in, where we're seeing new farmers coming into the agriculture sector, creating, using the land that we have readily available to us for opportunities to create employment and to uh, produce food security, which is something uh, for any of us that live on an island or if you live in Labrador, it's important to all of us. So it's region by region, it's sector by sector, it's industry by industry, bringing people together so that collectively we will be able to actually develop the resources that are necessary where we see the opportunities in, in Newfoundland and Labrador. And much of that work is happening with our federal, go our federal governments as well. And for that, if you want to really do the report guards and see the, the progress that we're developing across our province, we do have a website because we do believe in making sure that we keep ourselves accountable to all of you that have put in the time and participating in making days like this available. So today, it's why we're here, to introduce to you and talk about an action plan with, uh, to, for the forestry sector that you guys have worked so hard to develop. So one of the, uh, so putting in objectives and, and me things that you can measure is, to, is with the way forward commitment that we made was to increase timber allocations and harvesting levels by 20% by 2020. So these are the kinds of objectives that we need. But we also must make sure that, uh, and I, I've been thinking about this quite a bit as uh, we've come into Cornerbrook to actually for this sector. Last year was a much different story right here in Cornerbrook. We were dealing with tariffs that were, uh, that were unprecedented when you see what was happening around the world with, uh, because of the Trump administration south of the border. And people were left wondering what the future of the forestry sector would be in our province. Well, what a different world it is today when we've seen our group and our partners come together to work. And now the tariffs through uh, a lot of work, both legally, uh, politically, that was done at all levels of government and with the industry, working very closely with the industry. So we were pleased that by early fall last year to see that those tariffs, the right decisions were removed and the tariffs were removed and once again we were able to actually uh, stay on the path to work around corn pulp and paper. Because let's not kid ourselves, the newsprint industry has changed significantly since 2008. Right now we have a mill right here in Cornbrook that is positioned to be one of the most cost effective mills that we see in North America. But we never take that for granted. When we're in some of the better times and we uh, you know, come through the year that we've had with Cornbrook Pulp and Paper, then is the opportunity. So now is the opportunity to take advantage of all the great work that we've been able to do and build on that. We know we have issues with, with small wood. We must find new ways to use that resource. We must find the most appropriate ways to get the best that we can out of silogs, to use our biomass to create employment and to create new sources of revenue for those of you that are involved in that sector. So that is what today's message is all about. In 2008, we had 10 sawmills uh, producing upwards to 120 million board feet of lumber in our province. And in the last three years, we are now back to 92 million board feet. So these are significant results that are happening because of the investments that are made in your companies. So we went from 2008 where we saw a significant downturn. It got down as low as to just over in the mid-60 million board feet a year. Now we're back up to 92 million. So we're trending and we're growing that industry again and it's because we're working very closely with you. So we've seen increases over the last three years, and we continue to make sure that we get uh, those increases. We see uh, three pressure-treated companies in Newfoundland and Labrador right now. There's opportunities there to actually use that resource. And I look at uh, Lindy here today, representing the workers that make all this happen. We should never forget that as people that in the harvesting sector, people that are working in our mills, people that are working in our sawmills, they are big, huge partners for all of uh, with this industry as well. 
So ladies and gentlemen, I'm looking forward to the, the discussions that we're having with the folks that we have right here on the stage with us today. Uh, looking forward to your feedback. We put in place a very aggressive plan to renew the forestry sector, build on what is a very traditional resource for us in Newfoundland and Labrador. But when I look at my youth council and think about the meetings that we had just a few weeks ago, where we spent hours in a room, if you ever question why we're here today, it's just look at those three individuals, that the future of Newfoundland and Labrador exists with them. When people refer to those on our youth council as leaders of tomorrow, I kid you not, I kid you not, they are not leaders of tomorrow, they are leaders of today, and we have three great examples sitting there that will be participating in today's events. So thank you very much for coming out. They have a passion for the future of our province. I saw it firsthand just a few weeks ago when we spent quite a few hours in a room, and I will guarantee you, when you look at and listen to what they had to say, you will feel just like I do, as you would with Robin and Tyler that's with us back on this stage as well. So let's have a great day. We have a lot of good information that we can actually share with you. This is what rebuilding Newfoundland and Labrador is all about. And I want to leave you. When you look at our future, I feel great about it, but I can tell you why. In 2010, there were 223,800 people live, working in Newfoundland and Labrador. Kind of the glory days of this province as people refer to it. Well, I want to say this to you, that in 2018, there were more people working in Newfoundland and Labrador 200 and just under 224,000 more people working in Newfoundland and Labrador in 2018 than there, than there was in 2010. So we are turning this province around. We're turning around with the way forward simply because we have great, strong partnerships with people like you in this room. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Premier, for that introduction of the forest sector and for taking the approach of building the economy one sector by sector and giving it real focus where government is working with industry, it's working with academia, it's working with community partners, and that's the way we can get things done here in Newfoundland and Labrador. And by taking a firm direction with a cabinet committee on jobs and leading that and working with the ministers in those portfolios of economic development, we're seeing some great change. And the numbers speak for themselves, as you just mentioned. And uh, I remember uh, talking about forestry with you uh, even in days before we formed government. And I knew and learned quite clearly the passion that the Premier has about this particular sector. And thank you for sharing that personal history with uh, everyone here today. I would like to uh, now ask uh, another one of the Premier's uh, Youth Council to come to the podium, Mr. Macaulay Bellows, uh, to introduce our lead industry partner in the development of our forestry sector work plan, uh, Mr. Bill Dawson. Um, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Premier Dwight Ball for those kind words uh, from for the Premier's Youth Council. We really do appreciate uh, getting a weekend to spend with you and to talk and to express our ideas. Um, I would now like to introduce our next speaker, Bill Dawson. Mr. Dawson is the executive director as well as one of the founding directors of the Newfoundland and Labrador Forest Industry Association. He is a graduate of Memori Memorial's Commerce Program and has held executive as well as business development positions in the private and co cooperative sectors. Prior to his current position, Mr. Dawson acquired public project management experience with, within the province forestry branch. Outside of family, his passions include rural government as well as development and sustainability of rural convenience, or economics, sorry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. Bill Dawson. I'm excited. Thank you very much, Macaulay, for the introduction. And to pick up on the Premier's point, it is really encouraging and so important for us to see our future generation here with us today. And I look to the back, and it's, it's tremendous. At this great place of higher learning, one of our finest places of higher learning, our forest sector is rebounding. Growth opportunities abound. However, in the next 10 years, 30% of our workforce, our current workforce, will retire. 
So we need youth. Smokey the Bear wants you. On behalf of the forest industry, I would like to welcome everyone to our sector's Way Forward Cabinet Committee on Jobs Summit. Welcome to our partnership with the provincial government and together our commitment to the forest economy throughout Newfoundland and Labrador. On behalf of industry, I would like to acknowledge and thank Premier Ball, Minister Byrne, Minister Davis, Minister Mitchmore, Minister Leto, as well as the other cabinet committee members who are unable to attend here today. Thank you for recognizing not only the role that our sector currently plays, but the role we must play if we are to face our provincial, demographic, and economic challenges. It is with great respect that we recognize and welcome the indigenous governments and their representatives as true partners here today. And finally, we would like to welcome all our sector partners, organizations, and stakeholders, as well as the MHAs, community, academic, and business leaders. We would like to give a special shout out to Dr. Jeff Keshen for this, hosting this special event here today. Thank you, Jeff. Like other renewable sector industry, the forest industry is largely found within rural Newfoundland. And where you find forest operations, whether large or small, you often find the largest employer within that region. It is a responsibility that is not lost on those family businesses. Ten months ago, ten months ago, we, were, we gladly accepted the offer to engage and partner with the provincial government at the highest level to begin a process that would map opportunities and navigate around barriers, <clears throat> excuse me, and issues that were impeding our industry from the necessary transformation we needed. And I am very happy to say that we did that. Two months later, we were co-chairing a steering committee of 55 industry, government, indigenous, and academic and other stakeholders mapping and navigating close to 90 issues that we all rolled up into 32 action plans that you see here today. That's a lot of work in a very short period of time. And some of these actions will address very serious and complicated concerns, land use, energy, and what we do with the abundant amount of small diameter wood, just to name a few. The passion and the sense of urgency by which our steering committee tackled these issues was incredible. Having the privilege to share thoughts, positions, concerns, and ideas with such a varied and knowledgeable group of professionals, all who, were all who were and are still committed to helping our sector be all that it can be is absolutely priceless. Many of those individuals are here in front of us today. You did a wonderful job. I look forward to working with you and all of you in fulfilling and incorporating new action plans into this continuous improvement process. Thank you. You folks have done an absolutely, an absolutely amazing job. You deserve a round of applause. I got to say, couldn't have done it without you. And. And no hive of activity is possible without having a queen bee. And for us, we were lucky. We had two. We had Katie Norman, and we had Lorelei Roberts-Loader. 
You folks did a tremendous job. And I know Lorelai, you're hiding away over there. <laughs> Say hi, Lorelai. <laughs> tremendous, tremendous. My phone will never be the same. I strike the letter L on the phone. And who's this Lorelei person? It just, it just shows up. It's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. You instantly appear. I am really excited about where this journey will now take us. Our Salmo sector, as the Premier alluded to, is on its way to see a 40% increase over a four-year period. That's tremendous. And our good friend down south of the border met his match when he took on the best newsprint made in North America. <laughs> Energy, new engineered wood products. Barbecue scrapers, greenhouses growing from waste energy from our sector are just some of the things, are just, it's just the beginning of what we're about to see. This summit is a gathering of leaders and our sector stakeholders. This is not the end, this is just the beginning. I look forward to hearing from all of our key speakers here this morning, and I hope everyone will join us and network with us at lunch later, this, later on this morning. Thank you all for sharing this moment. Thank you for sharing this movement that we have all started here today. Thank you. Thank you, Bill, and uh, I think this man loves his job, and he's very enthusiastic about the future of the forest sector. Uh, does everyone agree? <laughs> Certainly, as, a, as a, the Minister of Industry and a former Forestry Minister, I've had the opportunity to travel around the province, as the Premier has, has noted. Uh, I visited a lot of sawmills, value-added manufacturing facilities, seeing the great products that are made right here in Newfoundland and Labrador, and I can only reiterate that the future is quite bright when it comes to our forest sector, and it's because of the people in the room to collaborate and be able to put forward such a forestry sector work plan. So with that, I would like to ask Ms. Radhika Verma, a member of the Premier's Youth Council, to come forward and introduce our Minister of Fisheries and Land Resources, the Honorable Minister Byrne, to provide an overview of this sector work plan. Just extending what Mike Ollie had said earlier, thank you, Premier Ball, for your kind words. As a member of the Premier's Youth Council, we truly appreciate having the opportunity to have a voice, speak our voice, and work with you in person to help shape the direction our province is heading. I would now like to introduce our next speaker, Minister Jerry Byrne. The Honorable Jerry Byrne has had a long and successful career in federal politics, having served as a member of parliament for Humber St. Barb Bayvert since 1996. Minister Byrne was re-elected six times to the Parliament of Canada. From 2002 until 2004, Minister Byrne served as a Minister of State for the Atlantic Canada Opportunities Agency, the youngest cabinet member in Newfoundland and Labrador history. He was parliamentary secretary to several key cabinet members and served in a lead role on a number of influential government standing committees. Prior to entering politics, Minister Byrne worked as an economic development officer on the Great Northern Peninsula, during which time he was involved in numerous projects from varying segments of the provincial economy, including the renewable and non-renewable re resource sectors. Born and raised in Cornerbrook, Minister Byrne completed his post-secondary education at Dalhousie University, receiving a Bachelor of Science degree in Biology. He was appointed Minister of Advanced Education Skills, now known as Advanced Education Skills and Labor, on December 14, 2015. 
and to Minister of Fisheries and Land Resources on July 31st, 2017. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Minister Byrne. Well, thank you, Radhika. Thank you so much for your contribution, not only to this summit, but to the Premier's Youth Council. It's fantastic. I had an opportunity. The Premier uh, asked me, invited me to, um, to um, basically present to the Youth Council some of our activities on agriculture, agri-foods, just recently. And I got to tell you, I, um, I left the room in a little bit of a spin because the ideas, the energy, and the enthusiasm that came from the members of Newfoundland and Labrador's youth leadership, represented by the Premier's Youth Council, was just amazing. It was incredible. So thank you again for representing all of the youth of the province, but in particular, those that step up and those that take ownership and leadership in our future. You are to be congratulated. Let's give all the members, all the members a big round of applause. Thank you to Chris Mitchamore, Minister Mitchamore, the second best forestry minister we've ever had. Uh, also to uh, uh, Dr. Keshin. Dr. Keshin got a, a note, a message the other day asking him, we would like you, Dr. Keshin, to uh, come and bring your presence. So I think he took that, that must, must have been an accent problem because he took that very literally and he brought presents. Thank you, doctor, I really appreciate that. Uh, we have a very august group that's assembled here. It's an incredible group that is joining us. I, as Minister of Fisheries and Land Resources, the Premier gave me a responsibility and a primary role within the Cabinet Committee on Jobs, working with my colleagues, to develop some sector work plans of key areas that make a difference and can make a better difference in our province. We have already developed sector plans on aquaculture and on agriculture, and today is our third. One department heading up a major book of business for the government because the Premier and our government sees our renewable natural resources, our rural economy in particular, as being of tremendous value, potential, and priority. That is the message that we bring not only through the, uh, through the sector, through this particular work initiative, but through the Cabinet Committee on Jobs. We're also looking at information technology. We're looking at cultural industries. We're looking at a broad sector of the economy. But today, today we're here to look at forestry. Now, Darren and I are sitting together with a, an, a, an esteemed group of people on the head stage. You'll notice that Darren and I are the only ones in the love seat. Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper and the, and the Forestry Minister, just, you know, obviously that, that's probably a metaphor of other things, but I can see there, I can see Rex Philpott say, yes, bloody, bloody, bloody son of a gun, they're all together, aren't they? Well, you know what? We are an integrated industry, and that's why it's so important to see so many people here today that are working in common cause for a common goal. So the Forest Sector Steering Committee and the work plan initiatives that come forward from it we announced this initiative, the Premier and I announced this initiative with the Cabinet Committee on Jobs back in Grand Falls, in Grand Falls back in the spring of 2018. Since then, 32 organizations with 55 individual members, 55 people formed our steering working group, uh, representing 32 different organizations uh, that came together to put together a book of business based on collaborative cooperation and a vision to the future. From this, over 80 individual items were imagined and prepared, but they were brought together in 32 different key areas, in, sorry, in 32 different initiatives in five key areas. Today, we are very, very proud to bring forward the way forward on forestry and our sector work plan. These 32 action items brought down over into five key areas include sustainable forest management, research, innovation, and diversification, business development and risk management, public awareness and the social contract, and human resources, skills, and labor. The meetings were frequent, intensive, and productive. I want to say a personal thank you 
to all who participated, all who brought their ideas and their energies forward, who put their heart and souls into making this initiative a success and form the 32 individual or, uh, action items that we see today from 32 individual organizations. You will also see, just as a product of this, in our uh, demonstration, uh, our demonstration form that we've produced here, some innovative products being produced in Newfoundland and Labrador that are already being produced. Today, this is a display of the talent that is existing in our forest industry, but it's also a display of our future. I also, I also want to offer up a well-deserved acknowledgement and a thank you to a group of professionals who are amongst us this morning. District forest managers, the leaders who help manage our forests every day and provide that local input with the provincial vision always in mind are with us today. These are the individuals who really make a difference. These are the people who provide us daily, weekly, and annual leadership. These are the people who work directly with our forest industry. Please, please offer all those who work as district forest managers who are with us and the entire group of people who work within forestry from the Department of Fisheries and Land Resources a big, well-deserved round of applause. These are many of the people who have been guiding hands in difficult times. I say difficult times, be really what I mean are times of change, times of disruption, and also times of renewal. A turning point for this industry, as was noted earlier, a disruptive point and a disruption that was caused by the closure, the closure of two of our three paper mills by the year 2028. What effect did this have to us all? And to explain this, you really have to understand and explain the dynamic, the integration of our forest industry in this province. I will not take a huge amount of time on this, but it has to be understood so that we can best explain the foundation to which we are, are today and the foundation to which we are built so that we can prepare for our future. Our forests do not produce one product, trees. They produce a variety of products based on size of the trees, size of the timber, and the species of the timber. This is an important component to understanding where we are today because as a component of our industry, when a harvester comes in and harvests a block of timber, they harvest not one element or one product, they harvest all. It is a natural, it's the natural source of harvesting. It mimics natural wildfire renewal. It is the way we conduct forest practices in Newfoundland and Labrador, and it is ISO certified, International Standard Organization certified, how we do our business. It is the way we do have done business in the past, today, and in the future. So we harvest a block of timber, we harvest, and if you're a sawmiller, you just don't harvest saw logs, you harvest small diameter wood. If you are in the pulp and paper industry or a pulp and paper contractor, you also harvest small diameter wood, but you also harvest saw logs. To get the cohesion, the integration, the economics, the economies of scale, there has to be a market and a conduit, an outlet, for both products, even though you may be only in one sector of the forest industry. That's the integration, that's the integrated component to our Newfoundland and Labrador forest product sector. Those in the sawmill industry are integrated with the Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper, our, sawmill, our, our paper mill, because they exchange. Our small diameter wood is exchanged for saw logs, our saw logs are exchanged for pulp wood. Now, Small diameter wood and pulp wood are often interchangeable because that has been the dominant market. But there are also other markets as well. And in the sawmill industry, you, it is a, a necessity. It is a valuable revenue stream to get rid of, rid of your waste wood and turn it into an economic viable product, a revenue stream. And these are the, that's the foundation to which a lot of the conversation, a lot of the innovations, and the elements of our 32-point action, uh, action plan are based on 
getting that fundamental reality understood, acted upon, and going beyond it. So, when we say that we have a disruptive mechanism in our industry, we also have huge opportunities because we are all working in common cause to get there. One of the issues that are found within our action plan, our work plan, our, work sector, our forestry sector work plan, transportation and species mix. You know, even, have you ever wondered why wood travels some pretty far distances in this province to get to the mill in Corner Brook and to sawmills uh, where it's used when there are arguably an awful lot of forests right around, a lot of trees around us. Well, a big part of this is the question of species mix. Whereas fir in the forestry industry is silver, spruce is gold. Some of the intensive research and development in the work plan is around improving harvesting and transportation knowledge and better understanding of the forest composition. Labrador is a land of bounty, but not without its own unique and intensified challenges. That is why we are prepared to work with special efforts with the people, the communities, and in particular our indigenous communities and nations in Labrador to develop Labrador resources for Labrador prosperity. We will begin by drafting an RFP as to how best to do that, putting our shoulder with the people who will work it. Throughout the province, government will work with industry to develop multi-year forest access road plans will have better forest planning. The, this efficiency focus also brings with us, uh, bring us, brings us to our plan to establish a wood sorting facility here in Corner Brook. This wood sorting facility, when we look at the product mix, it is not just softwood, it is also hardwood. It is not just saw logs, it's also pulpwood or small diameter wood. It is birch just as much as it is fir, it is just as much as it is spruce. One of the issues is how do we get an efficient capacity to be able to bring those resources from the West Coast in particular in parts of Central, but how do we get that to be able to mix, get that mix to the, to the hands who can make best advantage of it. These are some of the initiatives that are captured within our work sector plan. And by putting these words and bringing them to life, this is what we're all about. Now the Premier and others also mentioned trade. trade and some of the challenges that come with it also have to be emphasized within the context of the opportunities. Two trade issues have raised their heads uh, for Newfoundland and Labrador, both softwood lumber and newsprint. In the softwood lumber front, as many of us are very well aware, we have a competitive advantage. The United States, the U.S. Commerce Department, uh, with the backing of several of U.S. industry, put forward and regularly puts forward a challenge to the Canadian lumber practices and whether or not it represents a uh, subsidy and whether or not it's subject to countervail or to dumping charges. Well, in Canada, of course, this is a very significant national issue and it remains a local, a provincial and Atlantic region issue, but we are blessed because Newfoundland and Labrador, joined by our Atlantic partners, put forward what we do and how we do it and made this explanation clear, we have been given exemptions under the softwood tariff arrangements. As a result, and I say this not to, with, uh, with a chuckle but, or with any kind of uh, smirk, but I reflect the reality that in, Newfoundland, in Canada, the softwood lumber industry of the Canadian industry has already had to pay out $2.2 billion in tariff requirements to the U.S. Commerce Department. That's a hundred million dollars a month. In Newfoundland and Labrador, we are exempt from those tariffs. We're exempt because of the hard work of this government and the industry and those who support it from the Maritime Lumber Bureau and the Atlantic Lumber Producers Association and others who've really brought us to that point where we enjoy that advantage. We can do nothing. We can do nothing that could potentially jeopardize that advantage. The second issue that we faced, and this is a relatively new one, the tariff against newsprint. This was very serious, and as we all know, Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper, along with many other 
uh, newsprint producers in, the, in, in Canada faced a significant tariff, but none higher than corner of pulp and paper. There was allegations or suggestions of, subs of unfair subsidization and of unfair business practices. We fought back. The Premier fought back. The Premier put his heart and soul into this and he put his muscle into this. He put his trade team into this. And as a result, what could have been a devastating blow to the industry became one of our greatest successes. So we will continue to focus on trade as a key reminder of where we have been, but also to where we will be. We will do nothing to jeopardize our position, but we will do everything to enhance our position. Today in Newfoundland and Labrador, one of the reasons why we are still producing 92 million board feet of lumber and growing is because we are exporting more more lumber into the United States than what we have done previously. And we're going to grow that. We're also looking at our legislative environment, our regulatory reform requirements. These are all important aspects of how we do business and how we improve our business. Well, already we've seen changes. How we, um, we provide security or tenure to the forest. We've already established a new regime for commercial permitting, which has met with the unconditional support from the forest products industry, from, uh, from those who know that while we have tremendous stands of timber, we also have timber at that moment that is locked up, that is unaccessible for development. So we're making sure that we unlock that fiber and get it into the hands of those who will produce jobs and wealth as a result. We've also issued five-year forestry permits. We have already seen foreign investment or the beginnings of foreign investment on the Great Northern Peninsula. We've issued five-year forestry permits uh, for a particular project that helps, that has the potential to solve that small diameter wood problem. You know, I just want to digress for just a quick second and talk a little bit about the Great Northern Peninsula. You know, years ago, years ago, almost 30 years ago, when I lived in Mainbrook, there was a thermal generation plant that was, uh, that was uh, adapted for Roddington, for the Great Northern Peninsula. And one of, the, one of the main focuses was not just biothermal generation, biomass generation of energy. It was to create a market for small diameter wood. Because as we knew, and we knew 30 years ago, that the issue on the Great Northern Peninsula was not just one of transportation, it was also of species mix. Spruce, and it could be calculated to be so, spruce was in short supply and would be reduced in supply over the coming years. So a lot of our efforts have been in trying to establish new markets for small diameter wood. It's why it's so important, it's so important today that we keep this focus on attracting new investment, attracting new opportunities, but most importantly working with our local contractors, working with our local pulp and paper, or paper mill, to create new opportunities in bioenergy. This also becomes a key focal point of our way forward. You know, Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper has been working on a cogeneration project. We're going to advance that with, co with Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper. We have been working very, very deliberately and with an understanding that this is not just a necessity, it also brings forward with us an opportunity. Bioenergy and the new interest around it is something which we will see more of because it is important, not only as a good source of energy, of heat and other things, but as well because it helps make our forest sector, our harvesting sector, more enduring. With that, I lead to industry diversification. Already, the production of, uh, and you'll see examples of this down below, finger-jointed timber, which allows for longer timber to be marketed. Sexton Lumber, becoming a leader in this, in this technology, in this uh, opportunity. Sexton Lumber is now one of our largest lumber producers. It is our largest lumber producer in the province. With our two other large-scale mills, 
we can see new opportunities. There are three pressure-treated timber plants here in the province. Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper continues to work on diversifying markets with lighter weight paper for directory paper. Atlantic Workwork, Woodworks, their focus on advancing engineered wood in the construction of industrial and multi-level buildings will pay a dividend. FP Innovations, who we'll hear from shortly, will provide us with a good overview of what exactly is available in terms of new opportunities from technology. And a project that I am particularly excited by, the institution of a forest innovation center, here tied to our post-secondary education facilities, but most importantly, tied to industry. This is a partnership of having industry, Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper, and the entire forest industry joined by CNA and Grenfell and all industry stakeholders develop here in Corner Brook through the generosity of Corner Brook Pulp and Paper in terms of the, real, the facilities, but the hard work of others. We are developing a skills trade training center unique to the forest products, and that is a project which is worth celebrating and worth putting our back to. College of the North Atlantic. I want to make a special emphasis here. Fifth, over 50 years ago, a pilot initiative was started at the College of the North Atlantic to bring post-secondary education and training to our forest industry. 50 years ago, a forestry technology program was started, not knowing whether or not it would be for just a pilot level and one year only. Today, we've graduated 52 classes of forest technology graduates here in Corner Brook. Joined by the muscle of Grenfell Campus of Memorial University of Newfoundland, we have much work to do, but much opportunity to celebrate. So with that said, while we celebrate on diversification, I want to celebrate more specifically those who have been leaders in this industry. People like Mike Siddix from Sutrine Hardwoods, who's been producing flooring and cabinetry for a while. Woodworks in Central, Rex Philpott, from Cottles Island, who's been producing siding and others, uh, other products. Uh, we've got a whole lot of different examples of people who have been making a difference uh, in Newfoundland and Labrador. What they've asked us to do is one simple, simple statement. Help us do more. And that's what the work sector plan, the strategic work plan, is within our forestry sector and that's what we hope to accomplish. So is this a final document? Absolutely not. This is a work in progress. While we as a cabinet committee on jobs and a government have stated and we're well underway to success to com completing this, uh, this objective, we said we would increase fiber demand and supply consumption by 20% by 2020 understand that is just the beginning we will see success generate more success we will be straight-minded we will be level-headed but we will be imaginative and we will be ambitious and the 32 actions contained within the five action the five key sectors of our work plan will be today's guide, but it will be very much an organic document which will change, change to new needs, new opportunities, and the successes that we enjoy. With one final say, I would like to give a huge shout out to the directors, to the staff, to the frontline staff, to the directors, to the managers, to the senior people at Fisheries and Land Resources. This is my dream, dream department to lead. And I could not think of a better group of people to work for and with than the folks at Fisheries and Land Resources and the incredible professionals that they represent. God bless each and every one of us and let's see our forest industry succeed and prosper in the future. Thank you, Lorianne.
Thank you, Minister Byrne, for that overview of what's in the uh, forest sector plan. And, and I can say, as an MHA that represents the Great Northern Peninsula, for the first time in a decade, is see a way forward for opportunity to expand our forest sector on the Great Northern Peninsula, but not just there, for all Newfoundland and Labrador, based on the initiatives that's going forward and also all the people that are in the room here that are going to be working together to advance our sector it can only happen by having collaboration between industry, the provincial government, indigenous governments and organizations, and other important industry stakeholders. Uh, as the minister responsible for economic, culture, and innovation uh, here in, in, the, in Newfoundland and Labrador, I just want to highlight the significant role that the forest sector plays in diversification and how it will play in sustainability and future growth. And I'm very eager to continue to work with Minister Byrne and the entire team here to make sure that we advance the initiatives of the work uh, plan. I would now like to invite our panelists, beginning with Mr. Darren Pelly, the General Manager of Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper Limited, to come forward to the podium to speak to the importance of forest sector diversification and growth initiatives that are featured in the work plan to their organization. Good morning. I'd like to acknowledge uh, first uh, Premier Ball, Minister Byrne, all the government officials here this morning, uh, Chief Mitchell, Dr. Jeff Keshin. There are many, many organizations, research groups, uh, here this morning, and when I walked in this morning to feel the energy in the, in the room was certainly uh, tremendous, uh, quite, uh, quite great to see that. Uh, Minister Byrne mentioned the challenges we had at the uh, beginning of this past year, so I'd certainly like to thank the uh, provincial government and uh, their leadership for supporting this and the challenges that we have as a, as a sector. So thank you very much. It's truly an honor for me to speak to this very important group this morning. Uh, let me start by saying that at Cornbrook Pulp and Paper, we recognize the very important role that we have in the forest sector of this province. Having that role to play, we also understand the tremendous responsibility that comes with that for sustainability and also for growth. Personally, growing up in Deer Lake and living in the area, I uh, had my first work term in engineering at the mill. You really understand the, the importance to the community and to the province, to the very fabric. Many people in this room that I've worked with over time, Chief Mitchell for a number of years, it's certainly very important that we uh, are part of the community and part of the continued growth. We believe in the collaborative approach of this forest sector plan. It's brought together groups uh, from very diverse backgrounds, indigenous groups, research groups, industry, stakeholders through this approach is very clear in this province that we are all linked together and our success comes by working together. So thanks, thanks very much for the tremendous work that's been done. Cornbrook Pulp and Paper is going to be here for the long term. Kruger is committed to sustaining the Cornbrook Pulp and Paper operations. There have been significant investments made in recent years. In fact, just in the last couple of years, over $20 million has been invested in the power generation facilities, the mill operations, to ensure our sustained competitiveness. As we go forward, it's key that we make sure that we invest further to ensure our long-term competitiveness. We are proud of our history. We've produced the highest quality newsprint for over 90 years. We don't forget where we've come from. While Cornbrook Pulp and Paper will continue to be a major player in the global newsprint industry, we are now positioning the mill to diversify into new products. It's an exciting time. It's certainly the future of Cornbrook Pulp and Paper will include diversification into products that are growing globally. With this renewed focus, our vision has changed slightly. The vision for Cornbrook Pulp and Paper is to be a producer of environmentally sustainable energy and innovative forest products that improve the lives of people throughout the world. It's a change. We really are an energy warehouse and we need to look at things differently. To do this, we believe in challenging the status quo. 
We, we are creating innovative solutions through collaboration, and this working group here is a, is a perfect example of the type of approach that we need. This work plan are key to supporting our development and growth. Key initiatives as part of this plan support diversification in the value chain, optimization for the overall forest industry in the province. As we evolve, we will be using the advantages that have sustained us for many, many years to allow us to diversify for the future markets. By us evolving as Cormac Pulp and Paper, it will allow future expansion for the provincial forest industry. We are truly in this together. A key benefit of the initiatives of the forest sector network and work plan will be the leveraging of research and innovation. And that's something that I find very exciting. Kruger is an innovative company. It's something that's very much a part of the entire company's mindset and vision. Other operations within the Kruger company have diversified through research and innovative type practices. We have already started discussions with, with CNA, with Grenfell Campus Memorial University, on how to tap into research and innovation, and this work plan encompasses much more broader spectrum, including FB Innovations, and other research opportunities. Cornbrook Pulp and Paper is an energy warehouse for the green economy. And there are exciting opportunities that we must leverage, including thermal, biomass, waste streams that can be turned into new revenue streams and new business opportunities. But these opportunities are real. They're not future that we must look to. They are there now. But we need the research and innovative approach to tap in them into them to make sure that we make them reality very quickly. So very exciting. Initiatives such as value chain optimization through streamlining transportation are vitally important. As you've heard already, we move as an industry a lot of goods, products across the island. There are many opportunities to optimize that. Through backhaul, there are many, uh, if I think about uh, chip trucks that are moving chips here, backhaul opportunities across the province. Our sawmill industry needs to be able to grow without restriction, and we need to tap into this transportation uh, opportunities, as well as where Cornbrook Pulp and Paper are a restriction, we have high on our agenda to make sure we remove those bottlenecks. In summary, the Forest Work Plan brings together all the key players essential for the continued sustainability and growth of our industry. We will support the work required. We're very excited to see the results, and we'll certainly be working with all the stakeholders to ensure that our sector grows in the coming months and years. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pelly, for your remarks and highlighting the critical important role that Cornerbrook Pulp and Paper plays to our integrated forest industry here in our province. I'd now like to ask uh, Mr. John Davis, who's the general manager for the Halipu Development Corporation to come forward. And certainly John is well known in the area and, and I've had the pleasure of working with him in the past uh, and uh, has significant understanding of, of business development here in our province. So uh, Mr. Davis, if you would like to come forward. Thank you, Minister Mitchell Moore. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge the uh, Premier Ball, uh, ministers, um, MHAs, um, Mayor, Chief Mitchell, uh, I guess, um, and fellow um, colleagues who've served on the steering committee every two weeks uh, for half a day for the last six months. Um, I will uh, I'll jump in. Um, thank you for the opportunity uh, from the organizers to be here today. It's been a real pleasure for Halipu to be involved with this forestry steering committee. Um, we're primarily involved through the Halipu Development Corporation. Um, and as many of you would know, the Q, we, we call it the QDC is, is the ac acronym. As many of you would know, the QDC is the commercial business arm of the Halipu First Nation. And our involvement with the committee is centered around securing better commercial opportunities in the forestry sector. In that respect, we are assembled here today because we collectively understand that the forest industry is of critical importance to the economies of numerous communities here in our province. It is especially important to the livelihood and well-being of our First Nation communities 
in both Newfoundland and in Labrador. On that note, I'd like to acknowledge my colleagues, uh, Gregory uh, Jador of um, Miapakek, First Nation, and Bryn Wood of Nunatukavut, uh, both of whom uh, have been with the uh, Forestry Committee from the very beginning, going back to uh, late last May. Uh, if I were to single out the most positive aspect of this exercise over the last number of months, I'd have to say it would be the opportunity to build partnerships and, and to network. Uh, I'm not aware of any other forum uh, which has brought together our industry leaders, the senior levels of government at both the federal and the provincial levels, uh, post-secondary institutions, regulatory agencies, industry uh, associations, and of course our First Nations to focus on all aspects of, well, commercial aspects of the forestry industry. It's been an exemplary approach and has produced what I believe are critical strategies which are going to move us forward in this sector in a very huge way. For the QDC, it's produced some very forward-thinking and tangible results. Out of 32 major action items uh, that have been adopted through this process, we share a lead role on four of them and a partner role on another eight of the major strategies uh, that have been put forward. So. Uh, we are very heavily embedded within this, within this strategy. To step back a little bit, the forest sector has been a major source of economic and wealth and employment in the province for generations. Globalization, technology, increased competition, and protectionism have all served to impact our industry in a dramatic way. The past 10 years in particular have seen an almost perfect storm of these issues converge to cause our industry to rethink its entire approach. However, our industry has always been resilient in the face of these kinds of downturns. Um, I think that's why this steering committee uh, initiative has been so successful. It's been able to mobilize all of the key partners, and we, we've been hearing that with all of the speakers, uh, the Premier and the Ministers all morning. Uh, we've been able to mobilize our energy around a common agenda, which is focused on diversification. Uh, we've looked at technological advancement in the industry, environmental best practice, and most of all, working together. Those are all key ingredients in building a modern, versatile industry which will sustain the province for future generations. Um, as we were on this journey over the last six or so months, uh, months uh, each of our organizations uh, had a lot of opportunity to have input, to present ideas, and make recommendations about how we would play a more significant role in the forest sector. In addition to the regular sessions and teleconference meetings, many of our organizations were given the opportunity to present to the entire group as a whole. Some of you may recall those who were involved with the steering committee, uh, for example, the QDC being provided the opportunity to be one of the presenters uh, last fall. And at that time, a number of significant suggestions were put forward around the res um, access to the resource, exploring long-term management arrangements, and potential forest incentive programs. I'm happy to say that since that time, and even before the committee had, had really finished any of its work, uh, the QDC has had a number of contacts and discussions with some of our largest industry leaders, federal, provincial, forestry officials, about how to move some of these ideas forward. In conclusion, this has been a very worthwhile, uh, worthwhile exercise for the QDC. It's resulted in an industry-driven, common set of action items and objectives. There also appears to be a very high degree of cooperation and collaboration amongst all the partner groups. The QDC, like all other participants, has set its sights on identifying new commercial opportunities which will expand revenues and create employment. And now because of this partner-based approach, I'm very confident that we'll ultimately be very successful in this endeavor. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, John, for your remarks and highlighting the important role that Indigenous governments and organizations certainly play when it comes to uh, being involved in the forest sector and look forward to the collaboration and initiatives as we move forward. Um, also, I would like to introduce our next speaker, who's Miss Anne Lebron Ruff uh, with the Atlantic, she is the Atlantic Provincial Leader with FP Innovations and certainly had the pleasure of working with this organization in their past capacity. They've certainly done some great work here in Newfoundland and Labrador. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thank you very much for this opportunity. It's uh, great to be part of this esteemed panel. 
And um, I guess I could start with a little bit about myself. I am a registered professional forester from New Brunswick, but I try to come here as often as I can. And I'm fortunate that my job responsibilities extend over Atlantic Canada, so that enabled me to participate in the steering committee. We all have invested many hours, and I do believe that the work plan will build capacity in the province. I will use my time to convince you that forestry is in fact transforming into an exciting sector. Maybe not as excited as Bill, but I will try. Um, so I will outline four key areas where innovation are disturbing the business as usual model. So the first is within forestry operations. We are integrating big data and high tech solutions into forest operations. We're now in the fourth industrial revolution. So the first one was mechanization, then we had electrification, then automation, and now we're in cyber systems. So we refer to this initiative as Forestry 4.0. This was initiated in order to address labor shortage, safety, sustainability, and performance. As you can appreciate, the forest is the hardest place to put in a robot. Nonetheless, we estimate that in 15 years' time, we will see autonomous harvesters, so harvesters with nobody in them. This is not only possible if we, this can only be possible if we can in, uh, achieve in forest connectivity. Because more than 55% of the, for, the commercial forests in Canada are not serviced by um, cellular network, and it's probably higher in Newfoundland and Labrador, uh, we are now researching various existing systems to validate if there could be an option for our industry. Also, to talk about the transportation, we just completed an initial evaluation of platooning for forestry trucks. So where one truck is operated by a person and the, follow the following trucks are equipped with sensors and they basically just follow the leader. I have a video of that test in the display area if you're interested. The crucial component is uh, that forest operations are, started, are starting to be increasingly connected and automated. The second area is primary wood manufacturing or sawmilling. There's a new paradigm of small log processing. It requires a smart and agile platform. So FP Innovation is currently redefining what a sawmill should look like. We are looking at debarking, the sawing pattern, the saws themselves, how we can dry wood in less than eight hours, and I could go on. This is all good stuff. However, the market acceptance of these new products is key. So there's many efforts that are made to influence the development of building with wood codes and to demonstrate that mid-rise and tall wood construction can increase speed of construction and reduce costs. These are major game changers. The third area is pulp and paper. This sector is facing rapidly changing customer demands. So we partnered with industry, the end users, and the technology developers to speed up the implementation of new technology for current production. The hot topic, though, for pulp and paper is the development of new product for existing facilities. Work is ongoing to increase the utilization of less desired species. In some cases, it's the, uh, balsam, the silver balsam fir. Um, the, to develop 100% recyclable packaging from fiber to replace the single-use plastics, to improve tissue performance, and to make new paper products. These are all component, these components need to be cost competitive within the existing products to be successful. And the last of my four key areas is biosource products. This includes innovative materials, chemicals, and fuels. These products create new market and revenue stream for the forest industry. Much of this work has made the news, such as the world's largest production line of one ton per day of cellulose nanocrystalline in Quebec. This product has remarkable optical properties, and it can also increase the resistance by threefold. So basically, if you put that in your varnish on your hardwood floor, you can say farewells to scratches. And the most, and the most recent announcement is for TMP Biochemicals, uh, that's in Ontario, is the first demo plant of second generation sugars. Uh, these are building blocks to produce uh, components to go in paint, cosmetics, plastics, polyurethanes. And the second product it produces is aged lignin. And this is for use in animal feed and adhesives. So will the next big announcement be in Newfoundland and Labrador? We'll see. 
So these are just a few examples of the way we can and are diversifying our sector. Personally, I can't tell you how to overcome these challenges that we identified during the work plan sessions, but I can tell you for sure that F Innovation will be there to support the group in finding a way forward. So I, will, I hope I was able to energize you because the real work starts now. Thank you. I certainly want to thank you, Anne, uh, for your remarks. And it's very clear the importance of science and innovation and how the industry is clearly evolving. And uh, I will say one more thing, though, about the cellular piece, because we have a premier here in our province that's done something very innovative. And in this past budget, there was actually a pilot program in Newfoundland and Labrador to expand cellular service into communities. And we've had significant set success working with our partners uh, to drive that forward. And it's, it's important for economic development and industry. So I'm glad you raised that uh, point. We still have a lot of work to do here, but we're starting and we're moving forward. Um, with that, I'd like to introduce my honorable colleague, uh, Minister Bernard Davis, who's the Minister of Advanced Education, Skills and Labor. And it's great to see that there's a number of youth here uh, from College of the North Atlantic. There may be some people here from Memorial University. Uh, it was talked about the HR uh, issues and concerns and challenges with all the retirements that uh, are planned in the industry coming forward. So with that, I'd like to ask my colleague, Minister Davis, to come forward. Thank you, Christopher. Good morning, and thank you for joining us here today to support Newfoundland and Labrador's historic forestry industry. And I owe the organizers a very big thank you, actually, uh, for setting the event up and uh, having comfortable couches up there, and not for placing me on the love seat with Minister Byrne. <laughs> Thanks, Darren. Our Cabinet Committee on Jobs is excited to be working in partnership with the forestry industry. We are focused on supporting new economic activities and job creation, creating private sector jobs for Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, give them the opportunity to build, their, build on their futures and make the communities and our province stronger. Today, all of us in this room are making it clear that we believe in the forestry industry and the exciting potential that it has. My department, Advanced Education, Skills and Labor, is here to help more Newfoundlanders and Labradorians get into the forest industry. I am pleased to announce our government will fund and support the forestry industry in the development of forestry sector attraction and retention strategy. This, this analysis will identify how we can improve training, recruitment and retention and will profile emerging employment opportunities in the forestry industry. It will also be a roadmap for employers and the industry, or for employers in this industry, different levels of government and post-secondary institutions as we all work in partnership to develop and grow our forestry workforce. With this Human Resource Action Plan, we will be able to raise awareness and educate young people about important employment opportunities in the forestry industry. And I'm thrilled today to announce the creation of a new employment enhancement program which will support employers in the forestry industry as well as other priority sectors such as aquaculture, agriculture and the fishery. <laughs> this employment enhancement program is for employers who are engaged in value-added secondary processing. These employers will be able to access wage subsidies and training allowances to foster further innovation and increase growth in these sectors. This wage subsidy will cover up to 60% to a maximum of $12 an hour. This will help employers in the forestry and other resource sectors increase and diversify employment opportunities right here at home. The Employment Enhancement Program will open in April 2019 and is an investment of $500,000 from our government. Earlier this month, I also had the pleasure of announcing $334,000 for the Newfoundland and Labrador Forestry Association to explore knowledge-based production and the use of biological resources to provide products 
processes and services across all sectors of the economy. This project was approved through the Workforce Innovation Center, which taps into the expertise of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, making their ideas become a reality. This is just some of the steps the Department of Advanced Education, Skills and Labor will take to realize our government's vision for private sector job creation and economic development. Together, we can build an innovative forestry industry that offers excellent, high-quality career opportunities throughout our province. I'd be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to say a big thank you to uh, the staff of our department, uh, the, the memorial, as well as CNA for the great work they've done to realize the potential in this plan today. We're all here to help young people, individuals transitioning in their careers and newcomers to our province build brighter futures for themselves, their families, and our community. Thank you very much. Thank you, Bernie, for those announcements. And the initiative certainly will go a long way in helping us realize our potential. Uh, now I'd like to turn things uh, to the industry side. And uh, I had the opportunity to visit uh, Cottles Island Lumber Company, and I encourage anyone here today uh, to get to see their display of their value-added product, because it's, it's quite significant. And I was talking to Rex a, a little bit earlier and telling me that this is the 50th year, so quite a milestone for the, the operation, and uh, congratulations on that. I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Robin Philpot, representative of Cottles Island Lumber Company, uh, to come and bring remarks. Uh, first and foremost, I'd like to say a thank you for the congratulations. We're very proud of our heritage. Good morning, everyone. It is an honor to speak before you as the fourth generation of Cottles Island Lumber and a voice for the forest industry. My grandfather has a saying, chart the course and stay the course. That way, no matter what comes your way, you will come out the other end heading in the right direction. We have always stayed true to our original course of supporting the local economy by providing jobs, training, and premium wood products. Yes, in that order. Today, we have an action plan to facilitate the reconfiguration of what the forest industry is in Newfoundland. This process has been a positive experience, and as industry, we feel the plan accurately tackles issues that are prevalent in our world today, such as high transportation costs, and the attraction and retention of labor. Together, we are pursuing solutions such as trailer design and regulations, as well as enhanced education to promote awareness of the potential careers in the industry. The education is critical for modernizing the industry and bringing in a fresh perspective. Internally at Cottles, we are modernizing through continuous improvement and utilizing lean tools to optimize our manufacturing processes to reduce wastage in both materials and human capital. In addition to all this, the action plan is in alignment with Cottles' course for the future as we head down a new path. As an industry, we struggle with excess residual materials or wastage that we are currently incurring costs to transport and dispose of as there is no outlet available. We know the value of birch's firewood, but have we considered the other options that exist for biomass, such as bark, chips, and sawdust? As the only active commercial pellet mill operation on the island, Cottles' eyes have long been open to the latent potential of these residual materials. We have a sustainable natural resource that can be used as a low carbon alternative energy source. Therefore, Cottles, has created a new company to break ground on harnessing the wood energy that has been overlooked. Cottles Seasway Energy is an indigenous company that will utilize the excess residual materials of small diameter wood and biomass to create heat energy products for residential and commercial applications. The operation will focus on the recruitment and training of Aboriginal members and continue to seek other beneficial opportunities to support that community through discussions with like-minded organizations such as the Halapu Development Corporation, whom I had the pleasure to speak with this fall. The true potential for wood heat products 
is unknown right now as we brainstorm innovative ideas to displace the fossil fuel reliant regions and institutions to achieve a low carbon economy. Us as industry players are high energy consumers and entrepreneurs who require access to the grid to support our vision of a sustainable forest industry operating in the energy sector. We have reached alignment on the displacement of fossil fuels and utilizing biomass as a fuel source where feasible, but we seek fitment with the province for the optimization of excess residual materials where the possibilities for cogeneration exist. My goal is to turn waste into energy, which will aid us in our shared duty to support and develop the local economy in Newfoundland using a green and sustainable approach. Cottle's Seasway Energy is the foundation for a transformed forest industry that will open the door for entrepreneurs and institutions to build on our vision and the action plan aids in navigating this journey. All that remains is to stay the course. Thank you. What a wonderful speech there, Robin, and uh, certainly important to any company to stay the course, hold true to your core values, and look at all the opportunities that exist in the sector. And uh, it's very exciting to see young people involved. It, it shows four generations, quite an accomplishment. Um, with that, we have another uh, industry player uh, that will be bringing remarks. And I had the opportunity to visit Burton's Cove Logging and Lumber Limited. Um, a few years ago, uh, but seeing them at the showcase today, they had a highlight of how many jobs are basically created from from the forest, from, from lumber and then also other products, seeing things like the sawdust, the shavings, the chips, etc. So I'd like to uh, introduce Mr. Tyler Osman to come forward and bring remarks at today's summit. I'd like to start by thanking everybody for the opportunity to speak this morning on behalf of Burton's Cove Logging. I'm the son of the owner, Fred Osmond, 29 years old. I did mechanical engineering tech at the College of the North Atlantic in St. John's. I have a brother who's 22, who's currently studying electrical engineering tech at the College of the North Atlantic. Our succession plan is to eventually myself and my brother take over the business. We want it to be successful. We want the operation to have the best chance to prosper in the future. And from what I can see, this work plan is the start. We need to raise the profile of our forest industry. We need to have more collaboration and partnerships with players in the government, academia, and industry. We need to attract and retrain more young people. We need their ideas, their education, their energy in order to make this work. We need to have greater diversification in the products we make, who we sell them to, and who we work with to make it happen. We need support of all kinds. And I'd like to end by saying that I'm excited about the future in Forest in Newfoundland, the expansion plans we have for our business in Hampton. And I think this plan is a good start. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler, and uh, it's pretty exciting when you've got a couple of people who are in their 20s looking at the succession planning and wanting to get into the business, and uh, Burton's Cove is certainly an incredible uh, sawmill business that utilizes significant technology, and uh, I was greatly impressed. And uh, looking at the collaboration that we can all have, I think there's a bright future. I know there's a bright future in our forest industry, so I want to thank you. Uh, and all the panelists that spoke here today um, as part of the forest sector plan. And to basically do a big wrap up now, uh, I'd like to ask uh, our Honorable Premier, Dwight Ball, to come forward to bring closing remarks. And I'm sure you've got lots to say now. There was uh, quite a lot of energy and excitement here. So, Premier. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chris. And for those of you who would 
that would have sat in meetings with me, they know I take a lot of notes. So I've got like a five-page speech written here, uh, but it's not a marathon. I will guarantee I just really want to summarize and bring home some of the key moments I think that we've all heard uh, this morning here, which was, I think was a great learning experience for all of us because it gives us an idea to actually share uh, each other's views, because not everyone works in that same space. But I think, first of all, I want to talk to uh, our youth council, and thank you very much for coming out and joining us here again today. And I want to say, though, one thing I didn't say in my opening comments is that we have like 23 people that sits in our youth council, and they were, they were picked uh, from a, a huge pool that have actually submitted interest in, be parting, in being, becoming part of our youth council. So as I mentioned to them a few weeks ago, there's kind of the all-star team that we have available to us right across from the province. And they represent, by the way, uh, gender. They represent indigenous groups and all regions of our province. So that was important for me uh, when I continue to look for the advice from, from our youth council. Well, Bill started out, I think, with showing just the passion that he's uh, and describing, you know, what has been really 10 months of the work that's gone, in, gone into putting this action plan in place. Uh, 90 issues he mentioned, which really evolved into the 32 action items that we see today. But also one thing that Bill said and, and led into some of the other discussions that we came was, uh, that came out was 30% of the workforce setting to, reply, to retire, planning to retire. And that is so true. So it's as Bernie, which fed into some of uh, Bernie's remarks as well. But I think one of the things that left me from Bill's comments was that this is really not the end, that this is the beginning. And true to his words is what we will see as we, as we listen, listen to both Robin and Tyler. I also know that when you look at the forestry industry, there's a huge recreation value in it as well because even though all of us and some of you make a living from the forestry, it's a, it's a big part of the culture of Newfoundland and Labrador. And, and speaking of which, I know as Darren has mentioned, we both grew up in the same town. If you look at the history of, of Deer Lake, our community, we were built really on the forestry sector. And as I mentioned, that my grandparents would have never settled into Deer Lake if it wasn't for uh, the, the forestry industry. He also mentioned it and acknowledged, and I think and I've heard this coming from some of the other people that work within Kruger as well, is that they are committed to Cornerbrook. They are committed to Newfoundland and Labrador for the long term. And I have the, had the opportunity many times now to speak with Mr. Kruger, and he comes with a lot of passion. And if you're going to sit in a room with that, with that man, I can tell you there's two things. You better listen, you better make good notes, because there's usually a little quiz that comes near the end of it. And that's the kind of passion that he has for this province and the commitment that he would have uh, for Cornerbrook and really building on the 90 years that the mill has been around this area. Also about positioning of new products, which is something that when you look at innovation, when you look at any company to be successful over this period of time, it very rarely over 100 years would become the same company that it started with. So having, having the courage sometimes that it takes to actually let your company evolve and look at the new ideas and position the company, as Darren said, for the future is important for all of us. John had mentioned the work with uh, indigenous partnerships, and for me this is important as I am not just the Premier of the province, but also the Minister responsible for indigenous affairs. So it's important for me when we look at uh, the Development Council with the Alapu and, and, and Nunatuvut and working with, with Con River as well, that all our indigenous groups be included because they're coming with fresh ideas on how we develop our resources. And that is a, this is kind of the discussion that we've been having quite often now with, with Brendan and, and now with under the leadership of John in the work that they were doing. But Anne made some comments in her, in, in her remarks as she, about innovation. And there were some words that I always use that we must never forget that innovation doesn't have to be new to the world. It just needs to be new to your world. And what I see from FP Innovation as you come in here, there are things that will be new to the world of others with the work that you're doing. You talked about the sawmill industry. You talked about pulp and paper. You talked about new products from existing species. And that's important when you look at the forestry industry as a whole. You take the, innov the in inventory that we have that's naturally all around us, that you look for the species that will really in the past and historically not have the kind of value that we thought would be there but the work that you're doing, leading with the sawmill industry, with the pulp and paper industry, but also looking at the species that are not used to the degree. You also said 
The real work starts now. Many people, if you've heard, I think every speaker to some degree said that this is not the end, as I just mentioned, but this is the beginning. The real work, the lessons that we have learned from 2018 is something that we will use now as we go forward into 2019 and beyond. Bernie mentioned planning for the workforce of the future. We see it in our, in our fishery, we see it in the forestry sector, that we have an aging workforce. And it's, it's always this balance that you find when you go around the province and you look and, and they say, well, Dwight, your province has a high unemployment rate, but yet you see industry players and, and employees and employers looking for new employees. So we had to find that balance. And it's one of the reasons why we struck one of the largest agreements for, around uh, labor and, and training in the history of this province, some $949 million that we just recently signed with the federal government. This is where those kinds of funds would come from. We work with you as the employers to lead us into so we can help you to develop a workforce for the future. And I see people here from CNA, people here from Grenfell. It is our, it's our educational institutions that will help guide us as we identify the areas that we need training that we will actually then help you position what the courses that you would offer to our students in the future. Uh, Robin and Tyler. First of all, the Robin and directs. And I, when, when Robin stood to the, to the podium, I did turn to Rex, I gotta say, because you know, when he talked about four generations, I mean, there's nothing that I think that makes any of us more proud than seeing the generation that follows in our footsteps being successful. And when you look at four generations of, of, uh, of Cottles Island, as, as Robin had just described, and as they now look for new products, but again, it goes back to the innovation and willing to adjust, uh, adjust your core business plan to move into where the requirements and the opportunities are for the future. When you talk about those value added and looking at, a, at, at products that you now know, you're talking about, about energy, replacing fossil fuels. The forestry industry is no better, no better industry when you look at carbon emissions and how we deal with that in the future, how it impacts climate change, either with carbon sequestering or using the products to actually replace fossil fuels. So thank you, Robin, for being able to stay the course, but yet be open to those new ideas. Staying the course is what the way forward is all about. It's the stability and sustainability for Newfoundland and Labrador. That is the reason why we launched this plan back in 2016. It is what's taken us to where we are today in 2019. And to Tyler, to Fred and Zita and the family in Hampton, I will tell you first, Dan, this is in my district. So I get the chance to see quite often the impact of an industry in a small community, what it can have on a region. And as Fred and Zita works with Tyler and their family to put in place a successful succession plan is an important thing. If there's anything, a legacy that we all want, and we accept this responsibility, is to making sure that the world we live in today, we leave it in a better place for the next generation of Newfoundlanders and Labradorians. So I get an opportunity in a few minutes. I, I think there is a video maybe that we've got queued up here. I'm uh, looking for... Uh, whoever's in control of this video, wherever it is, but we've had a great uh, we've had a great day today. And when I look back at 2018 of January 2018, how far we've come in 12 months, we had this has been a successful year for the forestry industry in Newfoundland and Labrador. So I'm going to take a quick look at the video. Let's cue it up.
So it's been uh, mentioned by others, but I really personally want to thank the staff that have done such an extraordinary job in getting us to where we are. I will tell you this is a small group, but I can tell you they're lean, but they can be mean and they get the work done. So it's important for all of us to know the work that they do. We, uh, we meet with them quite regularly, I will say. So to the staff that have helped make this day the success that it is, I want to personally say thank you very much. Uh, as has been mentioned already, this is not the end. This is the beginning. The opportunities are real. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming out and sharing this day with us. Thank you, Premier. And uh, I don't think there's anything further that needs to be said. I think you, you hit, hit everything right on the, the head, the nail on the head there in that lumber uh, board, right? Anyway, thank you uh, for this, and this certainly ends the formal proceedings of today's event. I invite you all to stay for uh, networking lunch and uh, the industry showcase that's taking place, all of these uh, lovely uh, presentations that's around in the area and at the airport lounge. And um, I asked the panelists here today, though, to stay for media availability.